Folks, one of the things I think we need to do is we need to talk about Austin, Texas, because if you think about the real estate market, it is sometimes important to understand what's going on in different locations. And if you've been doing this for 20 years, to compare them this time versus last time. So if you think about the great real estate crash or the great recession, Texas in general really didn't have that much pain. But if you look at Austin today, it's kind of the poster child for pain. Lance Lambert from Fortune and News Lambert on Twitter is digging into the details. Lance, what do you got? Yeah, housing, 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 always a lot going on. And I think the the interesting thing to do with all the housing cycles is to just listen to what it is telling us and what's coming in. And what we have seen over the past, uh, you know, period of, let's say, 15, 16 months since rates have jumped up, is we got some softening in prices last year, in particular in the West Coast, uh, in the Mountain West, and some parts of the Southwest. And then this spring, what we saw is the market really stabilized and price growth was actually a little above normal for the first six months of the year. And uh, in particular, in the Northeast and Midwest, the markets where, you know, you can cash flow more on some of these properties relative to the rest, or well, you can cash flow still on some properties has seen way more price growth than the rest of the country. But through it all, we have had this big outlier, which is Austin. And what happened in Austin last year is essentially they had a flash crash where they went down about 10% or did go down over 10%. This spring, they saw almost little to no price growth, maybe about 1% through the first six months. So they were just kind of holding flat. And then as soon as the second half of the year came in, boom, now we're seeing the prices roll back over. Nationally, what we've seen is that prices went up a good amount in the first half of the year. And then now they're kind of flattish. Um, And some markets may be given up a little, but still not quite the Austin. And so I think it's important to like dig into the data and let's just see what's going on in Austin. So is Austin a canary in the coal mine or is Austin just an outlier because the circumstances were so different there? And I'm not going to answer either, but I'm going to share with uh, your viewers right now what the data shows. Awesome. Let's take a look. Okay, so here, here's what we got. Um, here is Austin. Uh, and Austin is super unique. And the fact, like you've said and pointed out many times, it didn't really see prices fall very much in GFC. So yep. Vegas and Phoenix, they fell 55%. Miami fell 60%. Austin in the Freddie Mac universe fell 6.7%. That's over almost three years. So that's like one and a half percent a year. Like, yeah, over 30 months. So essentially, like you talk about grinding sideways, maybe grinding yeah. up the national market heading forward. Austin, pretty much during JFC, just kind of grinded down slightly. Slightly. Is what yeah. happened there. Um, and uh, this time around in the Freddie Mac universe, uh, Austin's down 11% in 14 months. Uh, so already double its GFC drop. And, and I think I should have it's important to say during the GFC crash nationally, we're down uh, 27% from peak right okay. now. The national market's pretty much flat from peak dropped a little yep. bit and then regained it. Um, and if you look at some of the different indices, uh, John Burns value home index has Austin down 12%. Black Knight has it down 14 and percent. Zillow now has it down 15 and percent. So it's somewhere between like 11 and 15, 16. And the median has it down like 16, 17, I think. Um, And so the reason that Austin dodged the crisis last go around is that in the 80s, Austin did see a crash and Dallas and a lot of the Texas markets, they were the epicenter of the savings and loan crisis. And there was a lot of bad mortgage products that were put onto the market there. Plus they had an oil bust that occurred and employment took a big hit. And and Austin back then was way more dependent on oil than it is today. It's very much uh, 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 employment center now. And and then during the nineties, there was a lot of, uh, you know, financial reforms in Texas. They were like, we're not going to go through this again. 
And during the early 2000s, they didn't have the bad mortgage products. And so these yep. didn't boom. And then they didn't bust on the back end. Um, and so this time around, though, a little different story. And I'll get, get into what happened. Um, and let me share just a few more uh, bits of data. Of the 385 markets in the U.S. tracked by Freddie Mac, only 35 markets. So that's like 10% are down at yeah. least 3% or more in Freddie okay. Mac. Now, Freddie from Mac- the peak, from, the peak. from the peak. Freddie Mac, I think, excludes some of the market the homes at the top of the market that like Case Shiller includes. Oh, okay. So that's right. one thing to keep in mind. But if you look at this, these are the 30, what, five or six markets I said that are down at least 3%. You see Austin, you know, very much sticks out. Yep. And you have like the Idaho markets, something's going on in Honolulu. Uh, and then, you know, kind of some places peppered throughout the West coast that are down three, 4%, but still nothing yep. too crazy. Yeah. Um, and, and then very interestingly enough, Austin's like one of the very few places still down year to date. And now that we've gotten through the seasonally strong period, Austin will go down more. Sure. That year it's going to start to pull down. Sure. Um, and yeah, so you can see here, Austin's a bit of a crazy market where in the during the mortgage rate shock of the early, the, when mortgage rates got to 18%, Austin actually busted off 9% in the second half of the year. So just like how we saw San Francisco and some of the markets last year bust yeah. off once mortgage rates got so high, Austin did the same thing. Yeah, just in case and, folks, you can't read what he's looking at. That's 1981 he's pointing at. 1981, yep. So right there. Um, and then this is the uh, savings and loan bust that occurred in Austin. And then as you can see, the early 2000s, really just kind of weakness relative to the rest of the country. Uh, whereas if you looked at the rest of the country, these lines would just be gray all the way across. And by the way, the color scheme here is the University of Texas. Um, <laughs> nobody ever realizes that my charts are themed by the actual color scheme. Oh, that's awesome. That's so scheme. good. But yeah, so this is Longhorns. And yeah, then it, it, what, what I think it's really important to, what you just highlighted. I want to rehighlight. One of the reasons that Texas or Austin didn't have the crash, obviously, is because they didn't have the bad loans because they learned from the SNL crisis. But also important that shouldn't be skipped. They also didn't have the run up. Yeah. And, right, and they, they didn't go together where the mortgage yes. product helped to build the run up. And so they didn't Correct. have the run up. They didn't have the bust. Yep. Exactly. Exactly. This time, here's what's fascinating. So the past decade, Austin's been through an incredible growth period. Uh, yeah. Growth market, people moving there, incomes rising, all that stuff. And then during the pandemic housing boom, when you had a lot of the Californians, a lot of people from New York moving into the market, yeah. they went gangbusters. They went up 68% in less than 24 months. Wow. That's crazy. That is nuts. That <laughs> that, is that, nuts. You know, housing isn't a meme stock. And no, so exactly. they had periods. Look at this. Look at 2021. And I know this is really small. In March 2021, they went up 3.5%. The next month, 3.5%. The month after that, they went up 3.7%, then 3.1%, then 2.1%. Wow. They were going up years, a year worth of appreciation in like six weeks. Yeah. And, and so that that's what happened in Austin. And as you can see, then in the second half of last year, uh, went into a very sharp correction mode, came into this year, very faint gains in the spring, and now is rolling over more. And so I expect these will be down as we get these readings here. Well, the last thing to point out, and I think you have it, you may not have it ready, but you've also shown the inventory levels. And, yeah. and Austin oh. stands out unique on the inventory levels. So here, just to show the appreciation again, Chicago is a market that during the 2000s saw a huge boom, then a bust. Austin didn't see the boom and then didn't see the bust this time around. I mean, this is when right around here, things went hyperbolic in yeah. Austin. Bonkers. Yeah. And you can see Chicago just set a new all-time high this spring, despite mortgage rates at 7%. Wow. But they didn't have that run-up in price. And so that yep. run-up in price put local fundamentals detached from reality. Correct. And let me get to that now. Um, so here we go with overvaluation. 
the U.S. housing market did get about overvalued, quote unquote, as much as the last boom. The difference here, of course, is the last boom was able to see the bust because there was a lever down in the market, tons of inventory, uh, credit tightening as they changed, uh, they took away the bad products. We had the bust. This time around, we're starting to roll over for overvaluation, but it's really just because prices haven't moved that much nationally from last year's peak while incomes have gained. Um, and then here's Austin. Austin wasn't even overvalued at the height of the 2000s housing bubble. Oh, this wow. go around, very different story. It was overvalued 69%. It got in a situation like Fresno, your market did during the 2000s. Yep. yep. Um, and now the you know it's starting to get back to fundamentals, but unlike the US market, which is just doing it because prices haven't moved that much while incomes have, Austin's had incomes gain but then prices actually fall is what's helping to put it back into reality. Um, and uh, here's the investor numbers. Austin was unique because not only did we see an investor bull rush during the pandemic, Austin's was off the charts. Yeah. So here are investor purchases uh, to the left during July, 2021 to July, 2022. And then once the market started to roll over, investors pulled back. And there was actually a sell-off by some investors into the market sure. as they were Makes taking sense. gains. Makes sense. And I'm going to keep knocking these out because I got quite a few here. Uh, all the Los Angeles is the second biggest market in the U.S. Chicago's the third biggest. Okay. Austin is like the 34th biggest. Austin builds whole, more homes then both of them combined at certain points. Wow. Years. And uh, and so they had a supply angle to their market where new construction, there's so much of it, they're not constrained like the Californian markets. Let me keep flying through these. Yep. Um, and so what happened is Austin got to like 1700 homes at the market at the heat at the top of the pandemic housing boom that everything that would go onto the market was flying off the market yep. it would not stay on the shelves so once mortgage rates spiked and we saw fewer of the californians and new york workers moving into the market because fundamentals were mismatched unlike the rest of the country and this is very key they saw a bigger than average decline in demand. So yeah. everywhere saw demand pull back. Austin's was really acute because prices just got too far above what locals could afford. And so as days on market soared much faster than the rest of the country, inventory went from like 1,500 homes within four months to 8,200 homes. Yeah. I've never yeah. seen that before. That's crazy. Uh -huh. No, and I've never seen that. I've been doing this a long time. That, that's that's wild. And and I and I and I've said this before where Austin didn't see a ton of new listings. It's really just because the market shut down. And so yep. everything sat is what happened. Days on there. market. Yep. Yep. And so here's the whole country. Uh anything that you see burnt orange, the long uh University of Texas Longhorn collars is back to pre-pandemic inventory levels. Uh as you can see, almost the whole country is, you know, about 40% yeah. below. Austin is 9% above. Uh, yep. And when you have supply, that matters. It sure does. Interesting. Austin had 1.2 months of, of supply at the peak of the market, and now is only up to 3.7. So oh, Austin was able to see a fairly big correction without days on market getting, or not, uh, without month, uh, months of supply getting too high. It didn't have to get to 6%, but the right. key was it got back to pre-pandemic levels and it moved up very quickly. So the velocity really mattered. Uh, and I, th I think that's important to watch with a market, which is not just the number of where your days on market is, but where is it moving? Are you staying just around it or is there a big jump or is it still kind of ticking down? I think is very key. Agreed. Um, so this is a really interesting chart where... Uh, at the peak, Austin got over seven months of inventory during the crash and prices only fell 6.7. This time it's down double digits and we haven't even crossed four months. Oh, that's eye-opening.
Um, here is low tier, mid tier, upper tier, the whole country. Yep. Most of the country luxury has been hit more than the bottom. Austin's unique in that it's been hit across the board. Um, and yep. so it's the rest of the country is kind of in this grind or maybe it's, you know, still the markets like the Midwest are where they're ticking up. Austin's really just a market that cyclically went too far for prices and now is too far too fast. Yep, exactly. Um, and uh, two final points. Okay. Austin home prices are still up 40% since the start <laughs> of the So people who owned in Austin, homeowners at large, the vast majority, they're sitting pretty. It's really the people at the very peak uh, that have gotten pinched. And, you know, they might have to, you know, when you buy a home, you have to buy it expecting you're going to hold it for a few years. Uh, and so I think that's the situation that they're in. Um, and the other thing that I would like to point out is that sometimes the markets with the sharpest corrections have the brightest futures. The reason uh -huh. that there was a bull rush on tech stocks in the early 2000s, late 90s is because the market knew that tech was going to boom the next decade. Yeah. They understood the internet was a game changer. The problem was they got ahead of themselves. They got ahead of their skis. And yeah. that's a little different because they were picking some bad actors that weren't yeah. didn't have high upside. Um, and so I think the same thing can happen with housing, which is the market understands that Austin has huge growth potential and huge upward momentum. Population still growing very fast, yep. but they got ahead of their skis. And uh, the only last thing I'd like to share is just the historic uh, correction chart for Austin. Uh, you can see here is the oil and SNL bust, 85 to 90 for Austin, down 28%. The 2000s housing crash only went down 6.7. You can see the 1981 flash crash down 8.9%. Uh, and then this current one, and I'm guessing we're probably going to overhear in the second yeah. half of the year. And I don't I don't know what's gonna happen next year. Yeah. No predictions. Yeah, never, never any predictions. But this is why Lance is housing, housing, housing. He digs in where there's interesting questions. And I think Austin warrants that deeper dive, which he has done for us. Lance, where can people find you? Yeah, people can find me on Twitter at News Lambert or Google uh, my author page. Uh Lance Lambert uh, Fortune, and you'll find my articles. Awesome, buddy. Thank you so much.